how much damage has been done to global connectivity as a result of COVID? A flesh wound or a mortal blow to connectivity, sir? Good morning. Good morning. Well, neither of those two. I think this is the, uh, the report card that we've all been waiting for. It's our 10th year of participating in the study of global connectedness. It's our eighth edition. And, uh, and the, the study and the three and a half million data points within it suggest that the world, in fact, is more global, globalized and connected than ever before. And trade has um, bounced back uh, significantly to 5% higher than pre-pandemic levels. Just picking up on a point you made there about is regionalization um, taking over from globalization. I think one of the most fascinating parts is that's simply not the case. The average distance mm. travel for trade has continued to increase and uh, further distance itself um, over the course of the study. And um, within that point, I'd like to say that I think 83% of the, the senior leaders polled about a year ago said that nearshoring and localization was one of their most important agenda items. Well, here we are a year later, and that 83 has gone back to 23%. And that honestly doesn't surprise me because the same after the Icelandic um, ash cloud crisis, which was quite a well, significant trade event, actually. Well, John, for me, that statistic was surprising, considering at least anecdotally, we hear of different executives talking about the supply chain issues that were caused by COVID, wanting them to change their supply chains or governments wanting to bring them closer to home. Why didn't that play out in the data? Why is it the opposite that has happened? Well, I think those supply chains have been tried and tested over many decades. They're built on a combination of efficiency and economics, and the supply chains that existed pre-pandemic have served companies and industries extremely well, well, and they're very efficient. On top of that, it is very complex to, to change and adapt your supply chains, your tier one, your tier two, your tier three suppliers. So I think the proof of the pudding is in the eating in the sense that those supply chains have served everyone extremely well over a long period of time. And even during the pandemic, although in the first two or three months, there was a lot of chaos, it was the biggest thing that ever happened for 102 years. But here we are with trade being 5% higher than pre-pandemic levels and supply chains actually working pretty well. There's been some traffic jams, there's been some congestion, but people um, from an express point of view and an air freight forwarding point of view are getting what they need pretty much when they need it. So it, to, to up some then, the worst of the supply chain crisis has passed. Are you, I'm paraphrasing, but is that what you're telling us? And there will be no supply chain shortages coming up to Christmas. Yeah, well, as I heard you say earlier, Manus, I think there is, we're being, we've been through 17 different types of variations. I think we're getting through the pandemic uh, more successfully as time goes by. Logisticians and supply chain leaders are getting more comfortable with how to keep their own production line goings, going. And whilst there may be difficulties over you know, the end of the peak season, our whole organization is prepared for peak season now. We have roughly 100 more aircraft than we did about 15, 16 months ago. It's a case of capacity, capacity, capacity. If you can get lift, then the rest of the supply chain movement from an express point of view goes quite smoothly. We have enough drivers at origin and destination. Mm. It's really the people in the aviation side that is most critical, and we're well set up for that. The market, though, is certainly concerned that the peak is not over, John, especially with the emergence of the Omicron variant and the movement restrictions that could take place in Asia with a zero COVID policy. Are you concerned as well? No, I think, you know, we've been through so many variations of this, the, the lockdowns and, and the like that we went through in April, May, um, March, April, May last year, and then we were declared an essential service. I don't think in any one of our 220 countries, and we claim to be the most international company on the planet, um, suffered a day, a lost days of operation. So if you think about how much more organized and prepare and aware governments are now than they were a year ago, I think we'll move through this latest variant and any more variants that more mutations that come our way, quite frankly, um, much more smoothly than we did 
um, in spring of last year. So I am positive, and I think by spring of next year, we'll be in a different place again, and long-haul travel will start to come back. In fact, the data points within the study suggest that people are moving about more than they were before, month by month by month. John, stoicism indeed, but what does it mean in terms of I'm a supplier, I want to get my product to market. Um, are freight rates going to continue an upward trajectory? Your outlook on the freight pricing to, let's say, me, a manufacturer based in Dubai, getting my goods to the rest of the world? Yeah, so um, th there's a shortage of so, supply in, in the freight market, and that's pushed prices up. I think from an express point of view, our pricing structure is very rational and consistent, and our prices have been maintained. In fact, most customers have only heard once from us in the last 12 months, which was the general price increase at the beginning of last year. So our pricing has been very stable throughout this time. There's been some recovery of uh, additional aviation costs that we've had to make and put in place. But um, yeah, pricing has been stable, but the supply in the market is limited from an air freight forwarder point of view, and that means price escalations have, um, prices have gone up over the course of the year as supply has been in such short demand, such demand from a freight forwarding point of view. Well, let's dig into the air capacity, the air cargo capacity story a bit more. If flights are cut back because of Omicron, could that, and just how exacerbated do you expect prices to get? Well, I think the the pricing will remain at, will go up and down as 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 demand increases or or decreases. You know, from a DP DHL point of view, we've got our hands on all the aviation assets we can possibly get our hands on. There's a little a lot of interoperability between our, our air freight forwarding division and the air express division, which I represent. And our focus is on making sure we've got the right aircraft at origin to provide lift, which is significantly out of Asia on an east-west trade flow right now. 